Binge the full week ad free over at patreon.com slash inspired disorder. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. Black Bear is an independent film that uh, I watched this past week. I heard it recommended. It was part of a top seven list by the podcast Screen Drafts uh, for 2020 films. Uh, which is a Screen Drafts is a podcast that I love to listen to uh, where they make uh, best of lists in a very, the format of the show is a lot of fun. And this is a movie that snuck on the list and I had never heard of it. Uh, It is starring Aubrey Plaza, who I am a fan of. I have a small low-key crush on. Uh, Her performance in this is amazing. Uh, But the, the description of the movie was very interesting. Uh, so I decided to check it out. It's not available streaming anywhere, so I ended up just blind blind buying it, which I've been purchasing a lot of movies recently on iTunes, a lot of movies that uh, are recommended to me, movies that I enjoy that aren't really available anywhere, um, and this is one of them. So it's a movie that also reminded me of a film that I reviewed last September called One Cut of the Dead which is a Japanese horror zombie movie uh, that uh, really tells the story in a very unique way. It also reminds me a bit of like Schenectady, New York, uh, which is a both films kind of have uh, stories within stories within stories. This one is basically a movie within a movie, which is very similar to One Cut of the Dead. The premise of One Cut of the Dead is this um, Japanese production company is making a TV series, a zombie TV series, and while filming uh, a zombie, you know, while filming a zombie TV show, an actual zombie attack breaks out. But what you realize is that it's uh, like after the first act, it, it changes and it almost takes a step back to where you see that the things that happen in the short film are actually part of this other film that's actually part of this other film, uh, which is very similar to this. I don't know if that describes it enough, but it's very meta as far as the layers that this movie has. Um, So this, the premise of this, Aubrey Plaza plays a director, a writer-director, who is going uh, to uh, stay at a cabin uh, with, uh, like, it's an Airbnb type of a situation, it seems like. Uh, where she's going out to this secluded cabin to write her next film. And uh, she's staying with her host there. Or, uh, it's a musician and his wife. And they have a little bit of uh, marital problems. And uh, so the first act is her kind of showing up. And you kind of see her just trying to figure out what she's going to do. Um, you also see that she's, you know very good at manipulating people in some ways uh you can really tell that the the husband and wife i mean sh- the the wife really treats the husband like shit she's like just a horrible character really um not that the husband is great but it's clear that she's uh piling it on let's say uh and then it changes it changes to where it takes a step back and certain characters, all the actors are now playing different people. So it almost has like a Mulholland Drive, which I am not a fan of Mulholland Drive, but there's a turn in Mulholland Drive where it's just all of a sudden people are different people. Uh, this has a similar thing uh, to where now it's like a film crew making a movie at that cabin. And now Aubrey Plaza is playing the wife. The guy who was the husband is now the director of this film. And then the wife is basically playing the Aubrey Plaza character. Uh, so all the roles are reversed, but now you see like all this camera crews filming. So it's very interesting, very interesting. As opposed, in comparison to One Cut of the Dead, One Cut of the Dead I, is is very much uh, the layers of it is very much in the same universe. Where this one, because everybody's characters change as the movie kind of overlaps on itself, uh, makes it. A bit more ambiguous as to what's going on uh where you can kind of read it in different ways my interpretation of this film is that the first part of the film is basically aubrey plaza's character uh allison coming up with the story her next story which when she was talking about her process when you know she's talking to the the married couple that she's 
says she likes to start off with a basic idea like good versus evil and then just kind of letting that thing develop over time. Uh, so it, it's almost like she she came up with this this idea and it was like her first draft. And then when the movie changes and you see all the characters shift, it feels almost like this is the second draft of that idea. And then the movie itself that you're watching, the actual movie Black Bear, is the third iteration of that, to where the movie itself is the the final draft of the film that is showing the previous drafts within it. That is kind of my interpretation of the film, uh, the ending of the film. Um, I've watched a couple other interpretations of the film as well, and I think I think there's some that are are similar to to what my interpretation is. Um, but it's very interesting. The, the movie itself has a very ambiguous, open-ended ending. It doesn't tell you what's really happening. Unlike One Cut of the Dead, when you, when you finish the movie, even though there's so many layers of, of meta in that film, you really have a grasp of what's going on, even though it's a lot to hold in your head at, at, one, mo- at one point. Uh, but this one, because it's a little bit more ambiguous, a little bit, little bit off, uh, the black bear aspect of it is just like this unseen. You never really see a bear. Uh, I mean, you do, but it's like the bear almost signifies the the turn, um, which is interesting. It's it's an interesting film. I think Aubrey Plaza's performance is amazing. I think the film itself is a bit too. I wouldn't say a bit too complex, but the 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 ambiguous nature of it. It makes it, um, I don't know, like, I just don't know if, I, if I'd if i watch this movie again. I might, you know, like, as far as films that kind of have that thing, I mean, there's three of them that I can think of. This one, One Cut of the Dead, and Synecdoche, New York. There's probably other films that are similar to that. Like, maybe even Adaptation would be one. Uh, so maybe if there are enough of these, I'll do a top five episode which come out on saturdays i'll do a top five episodes of movies that movies within movies um which might be interesting because i mean this one's definitely one of those i wouldn't necessarily place black bear on my top movie list of 2020 um there were a lot of fun movies that came out last year um not a a a bunch of movies but there were enough movies that I really enjoyed. I don't know if this one would necessarily make my list. Uh, between this and One Cut of the Dead, I enjoyed One Cut of, Cut of the Dead a little bit more just because it was a little bit easier to... It wasn't as jarring when you're, you when things change. Where this one, it is a bit jarring. But after seeing it and thinking about it and kind of listening to other people's ideas about it... Uh, the way I have it in my head where it's like the first part is the first draft. Then the second part, when you're seeing all the the crew, that's the second draft. And then the third draft is actually all of the drafts combined in a way. Um, That's a way for me to process it in my head to where it it feels good and makes sense. Um, But yeah, it's very interesting film. Uh, The director hasn't done a whole lot of stuff. Uh, the director and writer is Lawrence Michael Levine. Um, but very interesting, very interesting stuff. Uh, I, I enjoy the complexity of it. I don't know if it, it necessarily hit it out of the park, uh, but I did enjoy it. So if you're looking for an interesting film to watch and maybe the premise of uh, having story within story be part of uh, the the premise of uh, of the film, uh, if that sounds interesting to you, I would highly recommend checking it out. I would also highly recommend checking out One Cut of the Dead. Uh, it's a movie, Japanese movie, that is available on Shudder. I don't know if it's available anywhere else, but uh, if you enjoy Black Bear, then I would highly recommend checking out One Cut of the Dead as well uh, because I think it does a very similar thing, but in a better way. Same thing with Schenectady, New York, I would say is very similar, is more similar to Black Bear because Schenectady, New York, there's a, there's I haven't watched it. I think I've only watched it once, but there's so many layers of 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 meta, like these different like layers of what's going on and repetition of what's going on in Connecticut, New York. It's also hard. It's almost more difficult to to hold in your brain uh, the entire thing. But uh, 
very good, very interesting, uh, and super excited to see what else Aubrey Plaza comes out with because I think the range in emotion that she has and her performance uh, is great. I think it's top to bottom uh, the best part of this movie. Uh, but the premise is very interesting as well. So check it out if you want. It's available on video on demand. It's called Black Bear. Get yourself some amazing coffee from an independent brewer out in Thetford Center, Vermont. That's right. Stationhousecoffee.com is where you go. Follow Station House Coffee on Instagram to get your small batch, single origin, premium coffee. Order it online and get it shipped directly to you. Let them know the Ray Taylor Show sent you. Go over to stationhousecoffee.com today and order yourself some coffee and follow Station House Coffee on Instagram. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad-free over at patreon.com slash inspireddisorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at inspireddisorder.com. Follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out!